let's talk about cancel culture. Understand that we have um, uh, relatively um, unforged. Uh, we, we are in relatively unforged territory uh, in the United States with the current American right wing. The American right wing is out of ideas. The American right can't win on policy. Their health care ideas aren't popular. Their economic ideas aren't popular. Their social ideas are out of the 19th century. They're totally wrong in every way on covid. They don't accept science even on increasingly uncontroversial topics. They can't win when more people vote. So the right tries to suppress the vote. Trump, in combination with the Republican right, lost the House in 2018 lost the Senate in 2020, lost the White House in 2020, not by a little bit, by a lot, as Trump likes to say. These people's ideas, while clinging to support in the United States, are the laughing stock of the world. So as we've talked about before, they make themselves victims to justify their own existence and because they have nothing else left. And their latest path in so doing is talking about so-called cancel culture. And so their entire CPAC uh, conservative political action conference that we saw over the weekend was crafted around this idea. The slogan was America uncanceled. Trump talked about cancel culture. Many of the speakers did. Now, I've said this before, but it bears repeating once again. Cancel culture, as described by the right, does not exist. It's the latest ploy meant to rile people up just like pretending trans women in sports is the major issue facing the United States of America. I'm not saying it's not an issue. It's just not a major issue that relates to the lives of ninety nine percent of the country. Now, let me be very careful. I whenever I do this, I have to issue a disclaimer to try to save my inbox and it still won't work, but it'll help. If you are going to argue that I'm wrong by emailing me an article, about one person that was unfairly fired for a political view they tweeted about or an article about someone who was fired because their political opinion clashed with that of others in their workplace or something like that. That doesn't disprove what I'm saying in this segment. I will gladly admit that sometimes there are unfair firings, just like sometimes there are false rape reports. This is a country of more than 330 million people. There are examples of everything, but basing an ideology around something insanely rare, pretending that a main policy issue is something that statistically is barely there, is a ploy weaponized by the right to attack the left, to attack organizations, to attack institutions, to attack social media platforms when the right doesn't like the decisions that they make. Cancel culture is the perfect ruse for so many right wing goals. Right wing politicians need to portray themselves as victims, claiming that social media networks and journalists and academia are all out to get them is the perfect way to do it. Religious right folks need to claim that their religion is under attack, that Jesus primarily is under attack. This is the perfect way to do it. Right wing politicians need to raise money. We know that sociocultural issues, real or imagined, doesn't matter if they exist or not are great for fundraising. Right wing media needs to make money. Outrage porn about cancellations uh, of Republican politicians or of right wing media itself or of Potato Head or Dr. Seuss or whatever. It is perfect fodder for ratings. And importantly, the right is generally less divided on cultural issues. This goes back a long time on economic issues. You see more of a range of views among the right, in part because of the libertarian right. In many studies, including a good one from Vanderbilt University, Republican positions on cultural issues exist within a much tighter range than they do uh, among the left. So they can easily generate more unity and more outrage among the right with these cultural issues against a shared enemy. This is truly the perfect ruse and it's working. Now, in reality, what they mean by cancel culture is that sometimes their speech has consequences. And it essentially describes free market capitalism, which they claim to support. And you know what? That's the way things work. Free speech, the First Amendment, usually the First Amendment doesn't even apply, but they talk about it. 
None of that comes with immunity from the consequences of your speech. That's one of the elements of capitalism. That's one of the elements of markets. Your speech enters a marketplace of ideas. And sometimes there are consequences, except in very narrowly defined situations. The consequences to your speech are someone else's free speech, which must also be protected. What the right wants is carte blanche to continue their policies of economic discrimination, elitism, xenophobia, homophobia, Christian supremacy, white supremacy, whatever, whatever it is they prioritize. They want to perpetuate that and insulate themselves by using the term cancel culture to intimidate the left into not criticizing them, to intimidate the market into not having consequences for their speech. Let's not fall for it. Now, give me a specific example of something that was done wrong. I will look at it. If someone didn't deserve to be fired, I will look at it and I'll tell you they didn't deserve to be fired. But this is the way that the right is organizing its followers against real progressive change and to justify their own exi existence absent any substantive policy ideas going on five years now. The Trump era was devoid of actual policy completely, and it is now essentially a, a, a grievance movement. And so often, you know, we talk about projection from the right. There are these um, enclaves of the right that love to say the left is now just a grievance movement. When I look at the left, sure, there's some grievance in some circles, but the predominant left wing movement uh, is around economic equality, accepting science and acting on it when it comes to covid, when it comes to climate, when it comes to so many different things. It's about a fifteen dollar minimum wage. It's about getting health care to people. It's a, there, there's policy there right now for the most part. And yes, on the fringes, you have uh, the, the sort of grievance focused elements, which I have no problem criticizing and have done for years. Uh, it is actually the right via this cancel culture meme that has become uniquely about victim self victimization uh, and grievances. Now, next, I want to look at some hilarious examples of how the right is now going absolutely crazy with the cancel culture story. One of our sponsors today is Lucy, and they are giving my audience 20 percent off. Lucy is a company founded by Caltech scientists with only one mission, which is to help people quit smoking and vaping by offering a clean, affordable nicotine alternative. Now, many of you know, you've heard the stories. I've known several people in my life who have struggled with quitting smoking. I've seen how difficult it can be. And nicotine alternatives can be hugely helpful. Lucy offers a nicotine gum in three flavors, wintergreen, cinnamon and pomegranate. They also have lozenges which come in cherry ice flavor. Lucy is affordable. It'll ship right to your door. You don't have to go out to the store. Shipping is always free. You can buy single boxes or save with a subscription. It's time to throw the cigarettes away and get rid of the vape and Lucy can make it easier. You'll find a ton of excellent reviews online from countless people who have used Lucy to quit smoking and vaping. Go check them out at Lucy.co. I've put the link right underneath this video and you'll get 20 percent off when you use the coupon code Pacman. And just a quick disclaimer, I'm required to give these products contain nicotine. Nicotine is an addictive chemical.